ओम सहनावतु सहनाऊ सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तुम विद्विषावह we have been looking at the conversation between king brihadratha and the teacher that he manifested called shaka yanya and what have we been looking at we have been looking at how the king has been extremely um eager for this knowledge and uh, very tenacious to begin with and um, and then tenacious to begin with um you know yeah i explained this yesterday kavi you know that it's not that the guru is depressed and somebody has to entertain him and him or her and please them in order to you know for them to start teaching i explained this yesterday um you know in detail is that you know the gurus are simply following the dictates of the upanishads and the upanishad says that the um this knowledge must not be taught to somebody who is unprepared so uh, either like for example the bhagavad gita at the end says idantu na tapaskaya na abhaktaya kadachana na cha shushrushave vachyam na cha mam yo abhyasuyati so in in other words don't give this to anybody who hasn't done tapas meaning who's not prepared physically mentally emotionally mostly emotionally and who has not you know uh, who is not a bhakta who hasn't discovered bhagavan and bhakti who hasn't you know um, what is that you know who hasn't done the preparation and who who is a tattler tattler means tattle the one who keeps gossiping so this kind of a gossipy person who critiques everybody behind their back this kind of a person is not prepared so don't give the knowledge every upanishad says that bhagavad gita at the end says that so therefore the teacher is simply following the upanishad's dictate that unless the student is prepared they will not teach and also we have to look at the manifestation of a teacher the teacher heater as the karma phala of this man's prayer in the form of tapas that how it is so it's just a law of karma in action so the person did intense prayer in the form of tapas for all the raga dveshas to be pacified to be neutralized to be suspended and then that gave birth to the the, the, the teacher that manifested the teacher that brought him together with the teacher and whether he manifested magically everything is magic anyway in fact you know uh, meeting pujya swami ji is pure magic for those who have done that that was magical and you know we even though it may have happened in a very mundane setting and uh, nobody you know came out of the you know pujya swami ji did not manifest out of the blue and then came and tapped tapped you on the shoulder but still the manifestation you know the meeting itself even though it may have taken place in a mundane uh, setting like a hotel room or a ashram meeting room or whatever it is it's still magical because it happened and that because the the papas that were stopping this meeting between the the, the a potential teacher and a potential students were destroyed in the wake of prayer in the wake of being able to handle things better because of emotional maturity etc so this is what is you know is talked about the arduous tapas must not be taken literally because every life is an arduous tapas and we have to learn to grow to be able to do this in the form of karma yoga and in the form of 
seeing that you know how the tapas is handled prayerfully we have to convert every order in our lives one has to convert into tapas and that is the the whole point of growth and then you know and then your second part of the question why should that the, the teacher guide in gaining viveka vairagya <laughs> that is what we are doing if we waited for everybody to have uh, if all the vedas are teachers waited for everybody to have 100% vairagya 100% viveka 100% shamadama etc uparati <laughs> all this then then we would be sitting without any job we would be out of a job especially in kali yoga <laughs> so therefore now is you know because of uh, pujya swami ji's uh, lineage everybody in pujya swami ji's lineage and perhaps in other lineages also we uh, you know side by side as, as one gains the knowledge viveka and vairagya are also being gained and that's why we are talk, you know bringing out small small things in this story that's why i'm taking time in spending the time in this uh, story to bring out all those facets and to look at it from our lives from the standpoint of our lives okay yeah no need to apologize you know it's difficult to um you know sometimes understand and uh, so no problem so it's not that every every vedanta teacher is uh, waiting for the student to stand on one leg and neither is the vedanta teacher you know profoundly depressed and waiting to be cheered up by the tapas of a student because there is some inner sadism none of those you know apply okay and so here uh, what is also to be understood uh, is the following is that when the teacher says ma pricha don't ask for this you know knowledge why because maybe in the past people were ready for this knowledge but he nowadays dushakyam it is difficult to gain yeah it is difficult to gain why lack of preparation because maybe in the satya yoga everybody was an adhikari means qualified for this knowledge now what nobody is qualified he is talking then you know whenever this upanishad was channeled which uh, you know these uh, people who are dating the upanishads are putting it at what some uh, whatever you know 4th bc or between 4th and 1st bc and uh, so <laughs> at that time you know if uh, shakayanya is saying shakayanya is somebody you know who is cha- This, this 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 whole story is being channeled inside the head of a rishi and so um so if at that time shakayanya is saying that people are not prepared we don't even we can't even you know uh, what we we just have to wait for the earth to open it up and swallow us because what preparation can be had but anyhow shakayanya is giving making a timeless point here and what is the timeless point is that you know that in the previous uh, yugas perhaps this knowledge was easier to gain now it is difficult to gain and so therefore what anyan kaman vrinishwar surely there are other pleasures that you can you can ask this is a very interesting you know counter question that the teacher is posing here to the the student brihadratha the teacher shakayanya is posing a very interesting counter question because you know brihadratha is asking for the infinite uh, and if he is told and on being told if somebody is told the infinite is very hard to gain then what is please ask for something else if the infinite is taken out of the question what remains to be asked for huh? the finite naturally so if the infinite is out of the question as a possibility so the only thing that is left is what the finite ha ah. and this is understood by brihadratha because you know this is a very clever trick that <laughs> shakayanya you know in order to doubly make sure that he is prepared he just gives him an option just like the same one that nachiketa got by lord yama 
uh, and what did nachiketa you know nachiketa got three bones for the three nights he spent without attention uh, on the threshold of lord yama's place and so here uh, so he says that uh, you know please you use some other desire surely you have other desires that are waiting to be fulfilled can't wait to be fulfilled you choose something else oh raja because this one is is very difficult to attain in the past it was easier and so what does brihadratha say first we have to ask a question what does brihadratha do and this is in the file at the end of the uh, the, the mantra number 2 shirasa charanam चरणौ अभिमृष्यम राजा इमा गाथा जगाद जगाद लॉन्च इन टू वॉट गाथा गाथा मीन्स एन अनइंटरप्टेड मोनोलॉग सच एज दी वन दैट अर्जुन हैड इन चैप्टर वन इन चैप्टर वन टूवर्ड्स द लैटर पार्ट इट वॉज एन अनइंटरप्टेड मोनोलॉग एंड सिमिलरली बृहद रथा गोल्स थ्रू दिस मोनोलॉग ओनली थिंग इज Arjuna in the monologue is depressed but Brihadratha's monologue is not a vairagya that is born of depression we have to really see this very clearly because the mantra number 3 and 4 and all show the show the show this fact very very clearly so in his response you know after after falling at his feet again uh and he recited this following monologue and let us read mantra number 3 bhagavan asthi charma snayu majja mamsa shukra shonita shleshma ashru dushita uh, ashru dushite vinmutra vata pitta kapha sanghate दुर्गंधे निस्सारे अस्मिन् शरीरे किं कामोपभोगैहि कामक्रोध लोभ भय विषाद ईर्ष्या इष्ट वियोग अनिष्ट संप्रयोग क्षुत्पिपासा जरा मृत्यु रोग शोकाद्यैहि अभिहत्ते अस्मिन् शरीरे किं कामोपभोगैः सर्वं च इदं क्षयिष्णु पश्यामो यथा इमे दं शमशकादयः तृणवनस्पतयः उद्भूत प्रद्वंसिनः इट्स अ वेरी वेरी you know big it's a very big thing uh, that he talks about and after listening to the mantra number 3 you are put off for at least one meal you are put off of all food <laughs> and that's the whole idea that one has to be put off of all food in order to you know gain this maturity because that is the kind of the vairagya that comes as a result of this of studying this mantra and that's the exactly the the point so he says bhagavan o lord asthi means bones charma skin you know snayu is a uh, soft tissues tissues are called snayu and then majja majja means uh, bone marrow where all the stem cells etc reside mamsa muscles and uh, you know shukra shukra means the you know all kinds of uh, what should i say you know reproductive material and uh, in particular shukra and also in general shukra means the 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 endocrine glands and their secretions shonita you know uh, shonita means the, the blood you know and shleshma shleshma is anything that comes out of the lungs via the nose and that's called shleshma it's kind of onomatopoeic and then ashru and there is a little part of bheda here uh, here 
some other places it is dushika 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 or dushita same thing ashru dushita means the uh, things that come out of the eyes tears and uh, the you know whatever uh, the uh, what's that called some kind of impurities so not just tears but tears etc tears and other impurities especially if one has pink eye and other things you know this kind of secretion will be there and so those kinds of impurities that come out of the eye so we have seen you know all these things that come out of various orifices and it continues when mutra meaning all kinds of excrement urine etc and then vata means the imbalance in the form of you know uh, what is that called the, the, the wind element so the ayurveda has these three elements wind and uh, pitta fire and kapha water so these are all there in a balanced way in the body but any kind of thing can set off the vata and also vata rises with age and so like this you know and then kapha you know decreases and so there is all these vata kind of um, what is that called diseases ailments well, vata rises means what it's not just you know gastric trouble although that is what generally we say vata but it's vata rules the mind so it's all kinds of neurological problems starting with forgetting where one has kept the keys in the in the uh, uh, you know in the uh, thing in the uh, you know in the house where one has kept the keys starting with that as age advances forgetting takes place and so an extremely deranged vata could be dementia you know insanity like this and similarly pitta you know has to do with the fire element speech eyesight um digestive fire all these things are controlled by by the pitta and if there is a pitta imbalance one can have severe digestive distress eyesight problems hearing problems all these things and kapha is the water element in the body and when that is deranged when that is in excess for example then there will be weight issues unable to you know um, what is that anetha too much tamas unable to move etc and kapha also governs diseases that have a lot of water logging such as pneumonia and edema and you know other symptoms like that and so he so basically why is all this big list of all the things that are happening all the disgusting things that are happening in the body listed because he wants to show that this body is nothing but a you know mass an assemblage of bones you know skin uh, what what else you know epidermis dermis and uh, soft tissues and all kinds of muscles and uh, uh, marrow and all kinds of secretions of an endocrine and other reproductive glands and then it is uh, you know and blood of course and then all kinds of secretions that are coming out of various orifices of the body navat dwara we say nine orifices and so each nine each of the nine orifices have something that you know uh, something to contribute and all of them are what you know and then uh, each time and then this is just a five element body uh, controlled by the wind water and fire elements uh, basically and then all of these things what is the contribution of this body durgandha mal odorous body all of these secretions are horrible and smell horrible and they are something to be got rid of and if you look at the cosmetic industry the cosmetic industry poor thing is trying very hard and and is uh, you know is always battling against how to stop all these odors from coming out of the body starting with deodorant etc you have channel 5 <laughs> you have all kinds of scents one of them is called samsara <laughs> so so you have 
you know all kinds of deodorants you have all kinds of scents you have all kinds of things so, and this is not just modern times ancient times also they had all these uh, you know ways in uh, which the uh, what is that thing? jasmine mogra uh, leaves were marinated in uh, alcohol oil etc to to extract the scent so that people would put it behind the ears and you know on their clothes so that they did, you know there was not a way to you know start uh, you know to to uh, to start uh, what should i say um, giving off these odors in public this was a, and it is still continues we have all kinds of lotions and potions for every every single you know thing that is you know that is being expelled from the body and so he says this this mass of assemblage of bones you know and blood and skin and muscles which is always giving off horrible you know horrible odors and therefore is what going further in the uh, look at the text again nissare asmin sharire so therefore like a kadali sthambavat kadali means like a, uh, i mean he doesn't say this it's just a, you know it is from the bhashya that i was reading this morning so kadali sthambavat means like the kadali means banana so banana stem like a banana stem and if you look at the banana stem what is there <laughs> you know in the banana stem what is there the answer should be nothing at all <laughs> yeah but apparently it's got a medicinal value the banana stem is cut fine and they make some curry out of it because it's very good for people with kidney problems it lowers the it's supposed to lower the creatinine level and uh, therefore it is very good for people with kidney problems you know at least on the when it is you know a mild impairment and so uh, it helps also with any other kidney infections you know all these things and so but it is horrible to eat no taste no smell no you know fragrance nothing it is so the body is like this banana stem extremely nissara nissara means without any essence other than being a finite we have to you know bring in here the word finite a finite assemblage of blood bones marrow etc full of you know always you know what should i say um always setting off all kinds of odors and a finite assemblage of vata pitta kapha which are always threatening to go off balance and give some disease or the other so in this kind of a body without sara without any purpose and meaning asmin chari asmin charire kim kamo pabho gai hi o shaka anya o lord you are asking me to choose something finite because you have rejected my choice of the infinite you have you have said that that's difficult to attain <laughs> and so imagine how difficult it is to attain a finite kama or a finite desire for this extremely finite body what is the use so if i ask for something for this body that is already coming to an end and whatever i ask for is also coming to an end what is the use you know it's like dressing up a skeleton in a kanjivaram sari kanjivaram sari is a very expensive you know sari with gold border made of real silver uh, which is available in uh, what's its name you know various uh, uh um, places in south india and so in this kind of a rich sari you you dress up what a skeleton <laughs> and then not to be satisfied you put on the skeleton various diamond silver and gold necklaces necklaces made of precious materials and stones and then what then then you also put lipstick on the skeleton <laughs> then you put some scent on the skeleton and then what you make the skeleton sit down and get it married to another skeleton that is what one is doing brihadratha says 
So the sthula sharira here, this is all about the sthula sharira here. Up till here, all that we have said, from asthi onwards to kim kaam opa bhogai hi, you know, uh, as till, uh, sorry, till asmin sharire, it is all about sthula shariram. It is all about the gross body. And the word gross body is a pun because the body here is shown to be really gross. <laughs> Horrible. A horrible assemblage of horrible things and then you want me to dress it up with some you know desire fulfilling something some desires that you are going to bless me with after two years and nine months of intense tapas you are asking me to dress this skeleton with something that you are going to give me what is the use even if what you are going to give me is going to be you know something long lasting Let's say you're going to give me a celestial flower that's more long-lived than the local flowers. What is the use of it? Kim kaam opa bhogai hi. Here it's a akshe parthe kim. It's a rhetorical device called, you know, it's a rhetorical question. It's a device called a rhetorical question. It's a grammatical device. Meaning, you don't expect an answer, so the question contains the answer and the answer is absolutely not. Is there any use of this karma for this body that is on the brink of, it's a tottering body on the brink of, you know, finitude? Well, you know, his body may be like that. My body is not like that. Your body is also like that. If it's not like that right now, just don't take a shower for three days, then you will see what Prihadratha is saying. If you don't take a shower, especially in the summer, for three, four days, then you will see that all the people who profess to be your friends suddenly drop out. <laughs> and the family people also leave the room whenever you come in. And so like this, you, you will see, it will be demonstrated very quickly, uh, the truth of what he says. Uh, very, very, very easy, very easy to prove that whatever he's saying is absolutely true. That's why he doesn't stop at asthi, charma. It's not just a, you know, a bunch of uh, assemblage of skin bones. That we could just poo-poo it and say, ah, so what? It's an assemblage of skin bones, but it's a beautiful assemblage. When I look at myself in the mirror, I find, you know, it is wonderful. Everybody is attracted, you know, to how I look. One can think like that. I look great, but really speaking, this body, you know, what should I say, off gases, all kinds of odorous, you know, byproducts, and the byproducts of this body make it eminently clear that this is just a finite assemblage. And that's why the word Durgandha and all these, you know, uh, all these things which are, uh, all these uh, 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 secretions that are coming out of the body are discussed in detail so that one gets, develops a vairagya as we speak. See, this is how the Upanishad teaches the Viveka and vairagya as it goes along. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't say that you have to come completely prepared. Even though it says that, it still teaches. So in terms of Uttama Adhikari, Everybody is completely prepared. Uttama Adhikari means a very highly qualified Adhikari. And uh, for the one unqualified, you know, Adhama Adhikari, this doesn't apply. But this is for who? Madhyama Adhikari. So for the Adhikari who is, who is kind of qualified but needs more help, or reading all these, studying all these, should give a sense of great disgust so that one is, you know, so that one doesn't turn back uh, after taking the step into Vedanta. So this was all about the Sthula Shariram. Now he goes to the Sukshma Sharira. Kama Krodha, Lobha Bhaya, Vishada, Irshya. And there is an I missing after Irshya. There should have been an I. Ishta Vyoga, Anishta Samprayoga, Shutti Pasa, Jaram Ritu, Roga Shoka, Jaihi, Abhi Hatte, Asmin Sharide, Kim Kamo Pabhogaihi. So the first one discussed, the first part of this mantra discusses the, the uh, limitations of the body mind complex, uh, sorry, the body in terms of 
fulfilling one's desires in in other words of what use is it to fulfill the desires centered on the body when the body itself is this disgusting mass of malodorous flesh blood bones and skin covered by some skin you know it's like the garbage which is gift trapped that's all it is so what is the use and then even if the even if you are not convinced by this let us look at sukshma sharira in the form of uh, what is your emotional makeup what is one's emotional makeup the, from the standpoint of the mind let us see what this mind looks like the the mind is abhihatta abhihatta means afflicted this is the mind the mind that is constantly afflicted by what kama all kinds of desires when you want something you want more of that then you want some more then you want some more then you want some more 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 you know so so like this kama krodh lobh so kama is is that which is insatiable desires but why does one want more because what you want is never enough because what you want you tried and then you got something and then you did not like what you got so you wanted something else and then you did not like what that came and so you tried again so the kama is endless and the bhagavad gita tells us that when the kama is you know what's the word for it when the kama is timid when the kama is impossible to fulfill it turns into krodha this is a very useful and handy you know a uh, thing to remember yeah why because all all the causes of anger we keep trying to find why did i get angry what happened at that time because anger suddenly comes nobody plans to get angry at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and then gets angry right yeah anger just comes and then takes you by seizes you by surprise and then one wonders why am i angry and then you say oh because and you give some reason but that's not the reason bhagavad gita says and sometimes you can't give a reason bhagavad gita says that the reason one is angry is because one could not get one's own way yeah because karma was thwarted and a thwarted karma turns into krodha that frustration and the pressure behind the karma for it to be fulfilled that frustration when it is not fulfilled turns into anger so the cause of anger is not having karma fulfilled anything you know even the subtlest karmas like somebody should approve of me somebody should love me it's not the karma for a thing an object it's a karma to feel good and even when that is you know thwarted it turns into anger so this mind that is now full of karma now full of krodha lobha lobha is avarice avarice means what greed simple greed i have something but i want something more and sometimes this is what happens you try not eating for a day or forget a day who will do that these days not eating for half a day you skip one meal you know you just try this you skip a meal and the next day let's say you go somewhere to have brunch you go to a restaurant or a friend's house or even in your own house you 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 know get ready for breakfast and then generally you will be eating what you know maybe you are eating a little bit of something and upma or whatever it is that day what you will do after having skipped the meal you will put three helpings on the plate generally this is what people do you can try it very few people are exempt from this habit the habit is that you know i need more why because i have fasted <laughs> mind remembers that and the hunger is too much but then what happens is that even though the people fill up their plate they are not able to eat that much more just because they have skipped something you know uh, in in the past 
And similarly for people who have been on a, you know, like a Navaratri fast with just water for nine days, you know, you can't suddenly eat nine, you know, helpings of food on the 10th day. You, It's not possible. But still, the, 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 the mind is, is not in sync with the body. And the, the, it's like the mind is not in sync with the stomach. So the mind thinks that I want more and more. It keeps holding the food. And then well, the body is not able to assimilate. And same way, with regard to the food, as one ages, certain things one has to eliminate from the diet. Ah. The body forces you to eliminate things for, from the diet. Sugar, that's the first one. Sugar, um, you know, all kinds of ghee, all these things. Because they have some, you know, problems. And But then what happens is that the thing that you have to get rid of, one has the most desire to have that. So there, this, and then one goes against the doctor's orders many a time. And then what does one do? One starts to indulge in those very things. Give up sweets. Okay, I'll just have, a, you know, one instead of ten gulab jamuns, I will have one. <laughs> and so like this, you know, this is a, this avarice to have more and more is, is, is intimately seen in the, in the food choices people make and in, you know, in feeling a, a lack of satiation, which is purely notional. And so the greed comes out of the insecurity centered on the self. And that's why it's called comfort food. You're not, not eating because you're hungry. You're eating because you want some kind of a comfort, comfort food. And then bhaya, bhaya means what? Fear. Everybody knows this, bhaya means fear. So always the mind is jumping. Oh my God, oh my God, what next? What next? What's going to happen to me? How much money I need to be safe and to retire properly? How much do I need this? And what will happen after I die? There is fear connected to that also. <laughs> Bhaja Govindam talks about this, you know. And the Bhaja Govindam assures that you don't have any control. You forget after death. Even in old age, you don't have any control how your money is managed by your descendants, you know. Putram api dhana bhajam bhitihi. You know, bhajam bhitihi means, bhiti means fear of bhaja, division. Whether they will, uh, dhanam, your dhanam, which you have so carefully um, collected, will they divide it amongst themselves unequally? Will they squander it off? All these things you have no say. All you can do is, to in the fear. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, the mind is always in the OMG mode. <laughs> so with this kind of a OMG mind, and then what? This, the bhaya quickly turns into vishada. First is fear. Oh my God, what will happen after I die? Oh my God, what will happen in old age? Will my children take care of me or will they even come and give, you know, or at least on Mother's Day, Father's Day, they will give some roses. Will my children do that? <laughs> you know, that is a fear. And that fear turns into sorrow very quickly because sorrow and fear are, are twins. Yeah, identical twins, really. They look also the same, but they have different names. One of them is called Bhaya. And the other one is called Shoka or here Vishada. Vishada, you know, or Shoka, same thing. Uh, why are they the same? <laughs> they are the same because, you know, one turns into other. So the starting point, if it is Bhaya, <laughs> let's say one is afraid, what will happen in my old age? Will the... Grandchildren, children come and visit or in their busy lives forget all about me sitting in the nursing home and uh, you know, will they will they come at least on Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, Deepavali, something like that, Christmas, New Year, will they at least come on some holiday and visit? That fear quickly turns into sorrow. What's the sorrow like? See, 
they won't love me at all even now it says they are so busy so after i go to the old age home will they be less busy not at all they will in fact be more busy so you see how the bhaya has quickly morphed into shoka the fear has morphed into sorrow and similarly what similarly you if the starting point is shoka sorrow then what it quickly turns into bhaya you know it turns into fear what is what can be an example of that i mean think about something one is mourning a loss oh let's say you know a, a contemporary friend of your own age unfortunately somebody's friend passed away and then you say oh such a nice person so sad i am i will miss that person you go to the memorial funeral whatever and you you know express your feelings such a wonderful person that, that person was and so great and so nice etc 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 and then what and then you know immediately it's just a matter of time before it turns into bhaya oh my god how will i die <laughs> what will happen to me how much that person suffered before they died at such a young age what's going to happen to me what is going to be my old age like and what if i am also you know what if all the other people around me start to die and i am left all alone ashoka has turned into what bhaya so the two are actually together that's why the upanishad you know attacks this uh, this samsari from the standpoint attacks this jiva from the standpoint of shoka and bhaya so upanishad is nothing but a treatise on the self on the atma which uh, reveals the i to be free of both sorrow and fear so from the you can you, you can attack this samsaritvam you can attack this you know samsara from the standpoint of what fear or from the standpoint of sorrow it's one and the same real and as though that is not enough the next one is irshya <laughs> it's not enough to be afraid it's not enough to be disorted by sorrow you know but it is what else not disorted beset by sorrow it is or then also it is what irshya irshya means what jealousy yeah you know you know when there is uh, what is jealousy jealousy is defined as a uh, asahishnuta asahishnuta means what um um intolerance for um for the uh, what is that how to say this when someone else is progressing well and doing well one's own intolerance is called jealousy very difficult to overcome so matsara or here irshya irshya means the intolerance for other persons somebody that i know other persons progress and this is a very you know very tenacious thing this jealousy because the immediately the mind goes back to oneself and says why not i why i didn't get this promotion why this idiot got this promotion why i didn't get this award why did the other person get the award so instead of feeling happy that this is your friend that you love and this person has been chosen for such and such whatever that is chosen to receive this honor in you actually one is happy but one is not able to express that happiness because immediately it turns into a a seething intolerance why did that person get i deserve better you know this is this is what the whole thing is i deserve much better much greater why i am not getting this you know and so this is irsha and then what ishta yoga ishta yoga happens all the time ishta means an object which is loved here is called ishta ishta you know and 
ಇಷ್ಟಸ್ಯ ಏನು ಇಷ್ಟಾದ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ವಿಯೋಗ ಇಷ್ಟ ವಿಯೋಗ ಸೊ ಇಷ್ಟಾದ್ ವಿಯೋಗ ಸೊ ಸೆಪರೇಷನ್ ವಿಯೋಗ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸೆಪರೇಷನ್ ಸೆಪರೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಾಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಲವ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಸೆಪರೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯು ನೋ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲವ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ಗಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಲ್ಯೂಸ್ the person goes away the things go away or they decline in time and in fact there is a saying sam samyogantah viyogah the definition of yoga is samyogantah you know when the samyoga finishes when the union of two things meaning the desirer and the object of desire completes immediately there is yoga so every samyoga is before viyoga samyoga means union you know so samyoga means union and uh, then what viyoga means separation so every union is up to separation and that's why in the christian marriage they have a saying until death do us part death or divorce whichever comes first you know until that do uh, until they part us we will be together so that is how it is everything is a uh, what is that stop watch every union is timed it's a finite union as soon as one gets married tick 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 because it's already karmically there you know how long one is going to be with this person and uh, and when this person is going to be you know separated whether by divorce or death or whatever it's already there or even just because they found jobs uh, you know in different countries and so for several years they had to have a international marriage one is in one country the other is in another country each of them uh, are are not willing to give up is not willing to give up their careers so that kind of a separation also then they come together go to the bahama or somewhere and for a weekend so that they can be together and then again the yoga they go back to their respective jobs and <laughs> so this yoga sam yoga sam yoga ri yoga sam yoga turns into vi yoga that is the definition of sam yoga <laughs> sam yoga means a union what is the definition of union that which comes before vi yoga <laughs> what is the definition of yoga what is the definition of separation that which happens after sam yoga after union so this is the law of life because it is it is due to the karmic order that all enjoyments and enjoyment is sam yoga without sam yoga there is no enjoyment all bhukti all bhoga takes place with the subject meshing or becoming one with the object even if it is as simple as one piece of cake let's say i want some yoga with a piece of cake and i sit down it's wonderful very nice piece of cake nice chocolate cake looks very moist and looks wonderful i take it out you know of wherever it was stored fridge etc i, I keep it in front of me and i am about to enjoy it it's a nice large piece and then suddenly the bell rings <laughs> it is your friend oh i just decided to drop in and that friend may have decided to drop in but what really drops is the heart into the stomach of this fellow <laughs> why because now i have to share that cake why because i was born in this stupid indian family everything i have to share be adithi the the drop in guest is a manifestation of the divine manifestation of bhagavan and so therefore what i have to share this cake and so <laughs> already the prospect of samyoga is hard because i have to give half of this cake to the friend and then what you know so then it is a half samyoga already or take another scenario now this person again cake and then you know if a bell doesn't ring phone call comes and then some bad news comes over the phone 
somebody you know has died passed away or some some two people that are great friends of this person about to eat and be united with the chocolate cake have separated after many years of marriage some bad news news comes and then immediately this cake which was an object of desire turns into an object of distaste because the mind is not in the place of having this samyoga the mood is off the cake goes back into the fridge you see some yoga did not happen without some yoga we yoga took place ah huh? and then what so another scenario you know the person was not having you know the person had already eaten a lot of things and out of loka greed is ends up having some yoga with the just the three the yoga <laughs> so like this <laughs> you know this kind of a um, yeah the, this kind of a thing is there very beautiful you know beautiful not uh, i mean beautiful not to listen to this but it gives a uh, what's the word for it it's uh, intended to give vairagya it's intended to give vairagya for those that are studying this so ishta yoga so ishta yoga means one is always separated from the things that one loves this is murphy's law if anything can go wrong it will if 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 you love something you will be separated from it and then what as though that was not enough anishta samprapti hi anishta samyoga or samprayoga as he says here so ishta yoga anishta samyoga so not only do i have to battle with the fact that everything that i love i am not getting anything of love nothing of love am i getting in my life not only is this a uphill battle i have also to contend with the fact that whatever i don't like only is coming <laughs> wrinkles are coming muscle loss is coming even though i spent time at the gym and then what else you know his whole set of teeth going one by one the teeth are going and because of you know because of age plastic surgery coming <laughs> so you know all the kinds of nips and tucks people go for and people make a trip to florida you know everything that i love goes teenage children going from my grasp teenage children living and then you know living uh, means what living means they don't listen to me anymore that is what the whole thing is <laughs> so everything is going 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 whatever i love is going digestive system going so i love sugar all kinds of rich uh, rich thing ghee it's butter etc and that is also going ghee butter are going why because you know because of the fact that i have you know cholesterol so i love ghee it doesn't love me back i love butter it doesn't love me back everything i love is you know i am unable to unite with and you know everything i don't love i am forever united with and you know and so uh, and then he gives a, a, a examples of that khut pipasa so again then see after addressing the the gross body the subtle body now he is addressing you know the pranic body so the pranic body means the body from the standpoint and the angle of prana meaning it is subject to khut pipasa khut pipasa means all kinds of hunger etc it's subject to hunger thirst you have to constantly feed this body you have to constantly water this body and then jara jara means old age it has old age mrityu of course it does it end well after jara what comes after uh, disease and old age what comes you know uh, death and so he beset with afflicted by rog and so all kinds of diseases he's summing it up now shoka 
Choro, Adi. In addition to Shoka, Bhaya, Doubt, some Bhaya, all this we can take. Hunger, thirst, old age, etc. Disease and then, uh, you know, physical conditions of, you know, this assemblage of bones and uh, uh, skin. And then mental conditions such as Gama, Krodha, etc. in this body. What is the use of fulfilling desires when this body itself is so finite and so temperamental, when the mind is so temperamental and the body is so finite and when the prana is so ephemeral, what is the use of this, uh, these kinds of desires, oh Lord, that you are offering to give me? Sarvamcha idam khaishno pashyamo. Khaishno means that which is always subject to kshaya. There is a, a suffix called ishnuch, which makes it like, you know, an unchanging, like Vishnu, you know, forever all pervasive. And uh, khaishno, you know, khaishno means uh, jishnu, jishnu means always victorious. Khaishno means forever uh, subject to, forever subject to decline. Khaishnu. Sarvam Chaidam. Furthermore, he says, further, uh, Pashyamaha, we see that everything that is here in this universe is subject to rotting, subject to decay, subject to decline. You know, like, like how, like, Yatha Ime Damsha Vashakadaya, like these small biting insects. Damsha is this, uh, Damshaka is these gnats, you know, gnats which kind of, these fruit flies, which kind of hover around the fruit and uh, you can't even, I mean, it is here now and gone and then what, you can't even see it properly and uh, so Mashaka, Mashaka is a fly, a fly, house fly. A house fly doesn't, they say lives only for one day. <laughs> I think it's a lie. Chance you have had a housefly in your house, it lives forever. <laughs> it doesn't go out at all. <laughs> so anyhow, so they are short-lived. So damsha mashaka daya hai. You know, like, like yatha ime damsha mashaka daya hai. Like these small insects of no consequence which are here today, gospataya hai. You know, like these, uh, like this leaves which keep falling off the trees and vanaspataya has the small shrubs etc. Not big trees, small shrubs which are what? Udbhuta pradvam sinaha. So they just are what? They are the Udbhuta pradvam sinatvam asti. You know, for who? For these, you know, things. You know, asmai ebhya hai for these things, you know, pradvam sinatvam, for these things have the status of being born and being gone. Pradvam sa means nasha, destroy. And then what? Udbhuta means birth. So like even these small, small things that we see, grass, trinam, leaves and grass, like grass, leaves, shrubs and these small little biting mosquito, fly, etc., all these things, they are what? Udbhuta pradvam sinaha. When we look at these small, small things, other than us, when we objectify them, we are able to see that they are nothing but finite. We see that. We see the house fly dying. We see the small, you know, mosquito, etc. just coming to an end. We see the leaves falling from the tree. We see the grass, uh, you know, browning and becoming hay and getting destroyed. We see the shrubs, you know, just dying. So like that, you know, we see that everything in this universe is subject to decay, subject to death, subject to all these kinds of changes, various kinds of vikaras, and finally subject to destruction. Why on earth will I be so foolish? To choose something that you offer to dress up this this kind of a skeleton which is subject to old age, disease and death anyway. So very 
wonderful poignant you know way of of uh, bringing instant vairagya you know like we have instant rasam and instant idli so you have here instant vairagya because after uh, understanding and reading mantra number 3 you know you are put off of at least one meal if not feeling like fasting the whole day <laughs> okay all right so then mantra number 4 isn't any better so uh, it it talks about uh, mantra number 4 it goes to a very beautiful place it talks about all these stalwart rajas these great uh, kings that lived in the past and also perhaps they were contemporaries of the of the uh, you know the king brihadratha they were all perhaps his contemporaries or they were we can say what can we say you know we can say that they were um, you know predis they were predecessors they were well known some of these were well known people who were predecessors of brihadratha and some of them were contemporaries so then he says okay forget all that i said if this is not enough for you to to see that i already understand this body and this mind to be an impermanent set of bones blood and emotions and uh, uh, let us look at how all the stalwarts these glorious people who achieved wonderful tremendous things you know the nobel prize winners these big people whose name went into the annals of kings these puranic kings whose names are you know adored and prayed in the puranas and all these big big kings let's see how they fared he says atha kim etaihi va pare anye maha dhanurdhara chakravartinah kejit sudyumnah bhuridyumnah indradyumnah kuvalayas ಅಶ್ವಪತಿಶಂದ್ರಂಬರೀಷಿಯಾತಿಯಾತಿಣ್ಯ ಉಕ್ಷಸೇನಾ you know the predi- uh, pre- predecessors in terms of time of who, uh, of uh, this king brihadratha so these are all names of kings and in between the names which start after the first line kechit yeah, after the word kechit there should be dashes which i have forgot and so you have to put dashes because they are all just one word sudyumna bhuridyumna otherwise you have to say sudyumna bhuridyumna like i when you separate it you have to put in the visargas okay so you just keep you put dashes there you know mentally so you know it is one line or if you have taken a print out put dashes on uh, you can put it physically okay so atha kim etaihi va athava he says or else let us look at how these big big kings have fared and who are these kings maha chakravartinah great king dhanurdharaha warrior kings who had you know who were known to have their bows and arrows always ready to strike the enemy and win over you know win over the enemies and uh, so these maha chakravartinah maha dhanurdharaha cha so these uh, you know great warrior king chakravarti means a large king you know and and, uh, and then who had a big retinue who had big coffers and in terms of status they were unsurpassed why because they had done great things they had not just conquered other people's kingdoms they had also been very good and were noble to their praja to their subjects and they had treated their people and they had done wonderful things in their lives and so such kings you know who are there let us see how they have fared and first is the predecessor predecessors and so what are the predecessors names sudyumna and the names are also very nice sudyumna means wonderful light wonderful glow bhuridyumna great glow bhuri means too much you know too much glow resplendent 
Indra Dyumna, the one who has a glow like lightning. You know, light, the one with the lightning glow. Kuvalaya Swa, Yavvana Swa, Vardhaya Swa, and Ashwapatihi, Shashabindu, Harishchandra, Ambarisha, Nanaktu, Saryati, Yayati, Anaranya, Ukshasena, etc. All these big, big kings with big, big uh, names, big status, big retinue, you know, all these things. They, these are all what, you know, uh, these are all uh, kings from the Surya Vamsha, from the same lineage uh, where Brihadratha comes. Same lineage. They are also, you know, uh, you know, great... Uh, great kings and these great kings who are all warriors you know what did they do you know what did they do means what you know they accomplished great things what do you mean what did they do they did wonderful things uh, you know i have you know they, they, they are already there in the um, annals of history and in the puranic history as well what have they done they have done fantastic accomplishments they have done you know, what's the word for it? Extreme accomplishments which have put them in the, um, in the canonical texts as great kings. And then he talks about the kings that are uh, his contemporaries, contemporaneous kings. Either they were related to him or perhaps unrelated. They were his friends. We don't know. Atha, furthermore, Marut. Marut is a king and some people say that Marut actually was uh, a synonym for uh, Brihadratha himself. It was a synonym. Synonym means it's, it's himself. He is, he, is, uh, he is putting his own name there as well. Marut, you know, Marutta and then Bharata, Marutta Bharata Prabhritayaha. So the likes of Marutha and Prabhr, uh, sorry, Marutha and Bharata Rajanaha, you know, Rajanaha, these kinds of kings, what, you know, these, these kinds of kings, Mishataha, Mishataha means in full view, Mishataha means seeing, while people even looked around, Bandhu Vargasya, so these are people who passed away in, in, in front of him, so Bandhu Vargasya Mishataha, Right in full view of all their contemporaries, you know, these people passed away. How did they pass away? Mahatim Shriyam Tyaktva. How did they pass away? They passed away after letting go, Tyaktva, letting go of great glories, great status, great uh, coffers, money. So Shriya, Shriyam means money, Shriyam here means uh, glory, Shriyam, Shriyam here means abundance in terms of fame, etc. Fame, prosperity, wealth, everything they gave up and Asmat Lokat, Amum Lokam, Prayanti and the, <coughs> what is his name, the <coughs> present tense Prayanti is used on purpose. Even though they have already died, he is using it presently because it is always happening right in front of our eyes that we see our contemporaries, no matter how great they are. I mean, it comes in the news. Such and such a person died. Oh my God, they were so famous. And what now? God. So, in, in, in full view of us, all these people are going. So, he says that in, in, uh, in present tense because... This, this kind of a destruction is, is happening and what more proof do we need that all their glories they have left behind and what are these glories? You know, treasury and uh, all other treasures and all other status and all other fame, accomplishments, everything. They first collected and amassed all these things and then they have left it behind and they have gone from this loka, asmat loka, Amum Lokam, Gachanti, Prayanti, so they have left all this and we see them going from
from one loka to another loka and and so what is the use what in that we have to supply that you know kim etai hiva what and kim etai hiva then we have to put supply from the uh, you know there should be anuvritti we have to supply from verse number 3 kim kamo pap ho gayi hi so what so what so what so what if you have had great accomplishments so what if you have had wonderful name fame like even these kings and where did they end up you know they ended up in the fire pit what fire pit they ended up as fodder to the crematory fire more we shall see you know tomorrow thank you om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम